If you're still using custom GPTs like his 2023 or something like Typing Mind or Poe, you're going to want to check this out. And it then just released something that replaces all of them and adds on one more important feature, the ability to execute your workflows and your agents all in one place. So not only can you chat with things like Claude, Gemini and OpenAI in the same space, but you can also invoke all of your workflows that you use day to day within the same chat window. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through what it is, how it works and what you should look out for. And finally, why you should care. Let's dive in. So when you update to the latest and greatest version of AnyDen, at the bottom left hand side right here, you should see this chat icon. When you click on this chat icon, it should bring you to something akin to this hub where you can pick from different language models. And when I say different ones, you could use things from open router, like open source models. You could use Olama. You can also use AWS Bedrock on top of the normal, well-loved models like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. So if you pick something like OpenAI's GPT-4.0, this will bring you to a brand new chat where at the left hand side, you have tools and these tools that you can invoke right now are web search. So you can toggle both of these on. And I'd imagine that AnyDen will be adding more and more tools over time. And then at the right hand side, you have voice control, very similar to text to speech, and you can attach things like images. So if you have something to explain, you can upload something more multimodal and have the LM break that down. Now, if this new feature was just this, it wouldn't be worth making a video about it. But where they add more depth is this custom agents tab where you can enable different workflows to pop up here so that you can invoke them on a whim. So if I open a new chat, I can now select a certain agent. So I go to, let's say my web scraper agent, and I can say something like, can you go and scrape the entire following website? And then I will just put my website right here, www.promptadvisors.com. And then this will invoke a workflow that's using Firecrawl, a scraper. It's using the MCP of Firecrawl behind the scenes to go invoke the different scrape functions to come back with a response. Now behind the scenes, this response is coming from a workflow. And if you don't believe me, if we go back to AnyDen, we go to my web scraper agent right here and we go into executions, you'll see this just ran right now. And this invoked all the fields that you saw on the left hand side. And you can see these are all the responses it came back with. So it was able to invoke this specific workflow. Now, was it magic? No, there is one thing you need to do in order to make your workflows eligible to appear in the chat. So all you have to do to enable this in the chat hub is double click on this chat trigger. And you'll see you have this toggle here that says make available in any end chat. You want to make sure this is set to on. And then once you do that, you'll be invited to enter a name for the agent and a description for the agent. And one last thing you have to do is make sure that this is published and then you should be good to go. But there is one thing to look out for. So right now I'm on the self hosted version of Aiden. And when I clicked on this chat trigger initially, I couldn't see this toggle. So in case you have the exact same thing and you're importing an old workflow to make it work with the new chat hub, all you'd have to do is just X this out and then add on a brand new chat trigger. Once you do that, you should be able to see this brand new toggle right here. And then you want to double check whether or not your workflow invokes in general. Once all that's done and the workflow runs fine, you can go back to the chat and double check whether or not you can see them here. If you do, then you're all good to go and you can invoke these within the chat hub. Now, if for whatever reason you still can't see it, what I would try doing in terms of troubleshooting is rebuild the workflow node by node into a brand new workflow and try and see if it works better with that version. Hopefully you shouldn't have to run into that at all and it just works. Now, what if you want to invoke a workflow that doesn't have a chat trigger as a part of the initial build? So something like this, where I have a lead qualification agent that goes through and you have a web hook as the primary source of truth. Well, all you have to do is just add on a chat trigger onto the workflow as an additional input layer. So you could just put this here, plug it in to the same input, and this will make it eligible to be invoked within the chat hub as well. All you have to do to make sure this works is double check that your workflow is able to be invoked by a natural language command or by whatever input that you can actually dump into the chat itself. So to give you an example, if we go back to here, I'll leave without saving. If we go to my meeting notes processor agent, very straightforward. It has an instruction to just go through a series of meeting notes and pull out all the action items. So in this case, if we go back into the chat hub and we select that agent right there, the meeting notes processor, I will just dump in a sample transcript and I'll show you how this would work. 
Now, since I technically have all the LMs in one place, I can not leave edit in and create the transcript here. So I can say something like, can you create a completely fake back and forth transcript that someone could have had on Zoom? And I'll send this over. We'll take the transcript, copy it as is, okay? And we'll paste it into our new chat. So I'll just take this. We'll go back to custom agents. I'll go to my meeting notes processor. I will dump this in. And then let me take out the little instruction here. And then we'll send this over. It should be able to invoke via chat trigger since that workflow is expecting a raw text input as the primary input to be processed. And within 10 seconds, we have the meeting processor agent. Go take the input, break it down into this action items table, create a follow-up email with those action items to the invitees, and we're good to go. And if you want to see the execution ID to be able to correlate it back to your workflow, especially if it's running on a scheduled basis, and you want to be able to differentiate between the chat hub triggered workflows versus the normal triggered workflows, you'd be able to trace it down through this ID. And very similar to ChatGPT, you have the ability to read this aloud, to edit your original prompt, and to regenerate it. Now that we know what this is and how it works, I'll quickly walk you through why you should care. Now, while custom GPTs are still popular to this day, they are outdated and frozen in time in the sense that no new features, no real big advancements have happened ever since the last couple of years. And if you actually wanted a custom GPT to do something, meaning to execute an, an, an workflow, you'd have to come up with something like an open AI schema that you would put in the custom tooling, and then you'd set up all the endpoints, you'd create the webhooks, you'd send a test request, make sure it works, and then create a prompt within the custom GPT that would know where and when to invoke that specific workflow and what to deal with in terms of the payload. And having built hundreds of custom GBTs back when it was cool for different clients, you would always hope it would work. And sometimes, depending on the model, depending on the version of custom GBT, it wouldn't invoke the same function in the same way. So the TLDR is that Editin created this to essentially centralize all the different actions you would do in one place. If you want to be able to just go back and forth with an LM of your choice, you can do that in the chat hub. If you want to be able to invoke a workflow and integrate that into a back and forth chat, you could do that in the chat hub. So the centralization of speaking to different LMs and invoking your automations in the same space is the aim of this feature. And while this is version one, I'm sure that as they get more user feedback, they'll keep improving it from here. And that's pretty much all you need to know. So if you found this video helpful, please let me know down in the comments below. Helps the video, helps the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.